Russ Meyer had a hell of a time fighting with censors and the nudity in both his Nudie Cutie films and his newer, rougher films, Lorna and Mudhoney. So when it came time to put out a new movie, he decided to forego the TNA in favor of something else that was popular with the drive-in audiences. Violence. <laughs> Welcome to Exploitation Reviews, and me, Rob. Today I'm taking a look at Motor Psycho from 1965. Nudie Cuties, those sweet, innocent, <laughs> and stupid films of the early 1960s were fast losing their popularity, so exploitation directors like Russ and Herschel Gordon Lewis and David Friedman were already moving on. They were starting to put out rougher stuff. Russ's first two rougher films, Lorna and Mudhoney, are considered by many to be his best films. And Faster Pussycat Kill Kill, the film that came out directly after Motor Psycho, is <laughs> both a fan favorite and a bona fide classic. But what about Motor Psycho, the fourth film in Russ's gothic period? Well, it might be the weakest of the four, but that doesn't mean it's weak. It's certainly worth watching. And I'm not the only one saying that. Those movies uh, stand by themselves. Um, Lorna, Mud Honey, Faster Pussycat, Kill Kill, and Mo uh, Motor Psycho uh, are four of the most extraordinary American films of the 1960s. <laughs> See, I cover respectable, important movies here on Exploitation r, &R. So let's take a look at this Motor Psycho. We open on a fisherman who is more interested in his rod and reel than his lovely wife. And us Russ Meyer fans know what that means. Ignore a lovely woman, bad things happen. <laughs> and here they come. Bikers up to no good. <laughs> well, uh, maybe calling them bikers is a bit too uh, grandiose. Uh, how about mopeders? Anyway, the fisherman's wife is enjoying the sun while her husband, you know, ignores her. And when she gets kissed, she at first thinks it's him. It's not. There's a scuffle. Hubby comes to the rescue. He does a pretty decent job fighting them off, but a three against one fight will always go the same way. The bikers tell the wife that she will hate herself in the morning, and then we jump over to our main story. Our hero is the local veterinarian, Corey Maddox. He's played by future Emmy Award winning actor Alex Rocco. You might recognize him as Mo Green from The Godfather. The bikers, or mopeders, have taken an interest in his wife Claire, and luckily for the both of them, uh, he shows up and has a better time defending her than the fisherman from before. For now. The next day, when the veterinarian is servicing a client and considering cheating on his wife, uh, the bikers have found their way to his house and are having their way with his wife. When he arrives back home, it's way too late. That's director Russ Meyer as the cop, by the way. And like the cops in almost every rape revenge story, he's not exactly a sympathetic character. I'm here, Angel. She'll be all right in a week or so. After all, nothing happened to her that a woman ain't built for. <laughs> yeah, not exactly sympathetic. Filling out our cast of characters is Russ Meyer regular Haji in her film debut. She's having marital troubles, her husband is having car troubles, and the bikers show up, uh, and they don't help. Things go sideways pretty quickly. Dante! Our veterinarian hero finds the scene and discovers that Haji is alive. The bullet just grazed her, so she'll be fine. Haji, well, here she's called Ruby, uh, she wants to find a phone and organize the rest of her trip to L.A., uh, but Corey, he has a one-track mind. He just wants revenge against the three men who raped his wife. And so, for the time being, these two are a team. So what we have here is a pretty early example of a rape-revenge film. It's not the first one, of course. Uh, this is, you know, a decade after Alfred Hitchcock had his uh, revenge a short film premiere as the opening episode of his series Alfred Hitchcock Presents in 1955. And it's a few years after Ingrid Bergman's film uh, The Virgin Spring that came out in Sweden in 1960. That might actually be the first rape revenge film, actually. Uh, I'm not sure. Do you know of an earlier one? But Motorcycle is well before the well-known American rape revenge films like uh, Deliverance and Last House on the Left. Uh, those both came out in 1972. Uh, it's before Death Wish that came out in 74, and it's before I Spit on Your Grave that didn't come out until 78. 
But that's enough plot and film history out of me, let's talk some highlights. Well, this is a Russ Meyer film, so it looks fantastic. The locations look great, you know, barren and dangerous, Russ loves shooting in the desert, and the people are beautiful, especially the women people, unsurprisingly for a Russ Meyer film, I guess. And all of this is shot from some pretty interesting angles. Yeah, Russ knew what he was doing with the camera. <laughs> and that's an understatement. Another point of praise here is the acting. Alex Rocco, fantastic. And the bikers are believable as, you know, degenerates. And on the writing side of things, I really appreciate how the bikers talk in this, you know, like counterculture, uh, hipster lingo, maybe we'd call it. I'm sure this went a long way back in 1965 to, you know, make them a bit scarier to middle America. You know, this new uh, rebellious generation. Yeah, scary stuff. <laughs> for, you know, suburbanites. And keeping on that topic of the times, uh, credit where credit is due to Russ Meyer here, this is the very first film to explore the idea of a Vietnam vet damaged by the experience in suffering from PTSD and becoming unhinged because of it. But historically significant or not, the movie's not perfect. <laughs> but this is a rape revenge movie, so I'm not making a shortcomings joke. Okay, well, I understand Russ being frustrated with censors, uh, but still, some nudity would have been nice. It's a Russ Meyer movie. My main and really only serious complaint with this film is how the rape is handled. Russ cut to the home invasion scene, you know, I guess we'd say in medias res, and it didn't really have a whole lot of tension. Uh, we didn't get to see the bikers stalking Gail. We don't even know how they found her house. Uh, we never see them breaking in. We never see her trying to defend herself from all of this. You know, there are a lot of opportunities for some tension building here, and it's just not here. I mean, especially considering during this time her husband was off with one of his clients, you know, maybe about to cheat on her. That could have been a really effective scene going back and forth between, you know, husband being, uh, you know, considering some infidelity and then his wife trying to fight off some attackers. Could have been great. Uh, it's not, and that's pretty disappointing. But that's it, really. I mean, it's no small criticism, but that's it. I mean, everything else about this movie, I think, is pretty cool. I still like this movie uh, quite a bit, actually. Uh, but, you know, before you watch it, just be aware of what you're getting into. This is not a Russ Meyer film that's filled to the brim with TNA, and it's not a Russ Meyer film with some overly entertaining dialogue. Okay, well, there is that one scene. Suck it! Suck out the blood! Suck it! Some more! Some more! Suck it out! Suck it some more! Some more! Spit it out! Spit it out! For the most part, this is a Russ Meyer film played straight, played for the mainstream, and in those respects, it's pretty successful. <laughs> it did killer business at the box office. So much so that Russ immediately decided to do a gender-swapped version of the movie. Russ reasoned that if people liked a movie about three bikers causing havoc in a small town, they would love a movie with three female race car drivers uh, who were also strippers causing havoc in a small town, and oh boy was he right about that. Thank you.